Yeehaw, I got snakers! Today we are building Arthur Morgan, the protagonist of Red Dead Redemption 2 and from one of my favorite games to come out on the PS4 life cycle this generation. A truly bionic hero, complete with angst, rage, dread, and general depression that is to be expected when you're a hunted outlaw in the West. But you get to grow your beard super long, and you get to pet dogs. And that's pretty fun. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. Our goals for this build is Arthur's a crack shot with a weapon of choice. Guns exist in the world of Pathfinder, but most games tend to stick to medieval fantasy, so crossbows will basically be our standard for guns here. Arthur has to have a boy, or girl, so he can ride through the world and hopefully not ram them in the trees. He's also an experienced tracker, able to hunt and kill anything that rests under the setting sun. For stats, we get four boosts at level one. Let's get Dexterity, Constitution, Wisdom, and Charisma. Arthur's another one of those characters who's pretty much good at everything. But for these picks, I wanted to highlight Arthur's gun skills, his strong but heavy build, his keen senses, and intimidating attitude. If you can't tell by looking at him, Arthur's a human. So humans get 8 hit points. They are medium sized. They have 25 feet for movement. You also get 2 free ability boosts. I'd say put them in the dexterity and strength. Arthur is kind of a brute with his hands. He has an itchy trinker finger. And for our first human feet, pick natural ambition. And for our skilled heritage, I say pick intimidation. So we can shake down drunks and the sick for pocket change. And leading into that, we go our background, and Arthur is a criminal through and through. Uh, you get the ability boost of either dexterity or intelligence, pick dexterity. Pick wisdom as your free ability boost. You get trained in the stealth skill and the underworld lore skill. You also gain experience smuggler. And for our class, I think Arthur is a bona fide ranger if there ever was one. So we get a boost for our dexterity, maxing out 18 for now. We also get nature and survival as our class skills. The reason I picked rangers is because they have a solid set of tracking skills, and a lot of skills highlight crossbows and ranged weapons. And the Hunter's Edge was going to give us Arthur's more gun-like stopping power. We also got four skills at level one, so let's get crafting, deception, diplomacy, and athletics. Arthur can craft things, he can reason with high society, he can lie to thieves, and he's a big strong man. That's where the leg's going to come in. At the first level, you get Hunt Prey. You pick one single creature as your prey. You get a plus two bonus to perception checks when you seek your prey, and a plus two bonus to survival checks when you track your prey. You also ignore the penalty for making range attacks within your second range increment against your prey you're hunting. So with a hand crossbow, which is 60 feet at the moment, now it's 120 feet without taking a penalty, which is a really, really big distance. So let's play it safe and get more distance. Uh, Hunter's Edge, and for Hunter's Edge, I think precision is the best for Arthur. The first time you hit your hunted prey in a round, you don't extra 1d8 of additional precision damage, like kind of like sneak attack. And I think this is the only way we're going to be able to get the stopping power of a gun in Arthur's hands. And for our ranger feet, I would go with horse companion, so we can get a horse to ride on. Because every cowboy needs a horse, needs a horse, needs a horse. Arthur loves his horses, and so does my fiance. Her horse is named Eddie, and she loves him very much. And from natural ambition from the first level of human, go crossbow ace. When you're willing to crossbow and use hunt prey or use interact to reload your crossbow, get a plus two bonus to damage roll on your next strike with the crossbow. If the crossbow is a simple crossbow, you also increase the damage die by one step. Our hand crossbow now does 1d8 of damage plus six at this level, plus an additional 1d8 from precision, which is great. And for our second ranger feat, Arthur has a very unorthodox way of fighting compared to say John Marston of Red Dead Redemption 1. He uses two guns instead of one. So we're going to get the dual weapon dedication, which isn't too important, but this is a stepping stone to something much better. You get double slice, which is good if you want to use two, two knives, I guess. And for our skill fields, get alchemical crafting, so we can craft four level one alchemy's potions. I suggest Juggernaut, Elixir of Life, Quicksilver, and a Vaccine. I don't know why you need that last one, though. You're in good health. For our third level, let's get a general feat. Let's get Ride to automatically exceed any ride check. The last thing you want to do is get bucked off your horse. We also get Iron Will. Your rank in Will saves gets increased to Expert. And the skill increase gets get Survival up to Expert because Arthur's a really good hunter. For a fourth level Ranger feat, go Dual Weapon Reload and pick Crossbows. You interact to reload one-handed ranged weapons you're holding. Unlike most interact actions, you don't need a free hand to reload your ranged weapon this way. So, in theory, you can now dual wield small crossbows in your hands without any issues. And for a skill feat, pick Quick Repair. You take one minute to repair an item, which is good if you want to clean your guns when they get dirty and they need cleaning. For fifth level, we get four ability boosts. Put them in the Dexterity, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma. You're starting to wise up to the way the world's kind of working out for Dutch's gang at the moment. For our Ancestry feat, go General Training and get Fleet to increase our land speed by five feet 
to a flat 30. Arthur's pretty good stamina, and he's really good at getting into cover when he needs to. For our skill increase, let's get Athletics to Expert, and our Intimidation to Expert through Skilled Heritage. Arthur's really scary, and he can definitely shake people down with more than a stare. We also get Trackless Step to get the benefits of cover tracks and such terrains without having to move half our speed, which is really good when you're on the run from the law. We also get Weapon Expertise. Our rank in simple and martial weapons gets increased to expert. We also gain critical specialization effects with all our simple and martial weapons when we attack our hunted prey. For our sixth level, Ranger Feet, pick Quick Draw. You interact to draw a weapon and then strike that weapon, which is really good if you want to get that first shot off in combat. And for our skill feet, pick Survey Wildlife to study the details of wellness to determine the presence of nearby creatures, which is really good when you're looking for legendary creatures. For our seventh level, we get Evasion. Our rank and reflex saves get bumped up to master. When you roll a success on a reflex save, it gets a critical success instead. Someone throws a grenade, dodge it. Someone throws a fire grenade, dodge it. For our general feat this level, let's get toughness to increase our health by our level. Arthur's really hard to put down, so this is going to get us a little bit extra health in there. For our skill increases level, let's get crafting up to expert. We also get vigilant senses. Our rank and perception increases to master. And weapon specialization to deal an additional two damage with weapons we have expert in. Or damage gets increased to 3 if we're a master in them. And for the 8th level ranger feat, let's get far shot to double our weapon range increments. So our crossbow is now doing 120 feet per shot, 180 with a hunted prey, and heavy crossbow is doing 240 feet with an extra 300 feet from hunted prey, if I'm doing that math correctly. For our skill field, let's get experience tracker. You can track while moving full speed by taking a negative 5 penalty survival check. Your survival check is going to be pretty high by the end of this build, so this is a perfect way to balance out having to hunt prey. Through the forest and through the sand, whatever you need to find your prey through. And for our ninth level, let's get Haughty Obstancy to roll success on a saving throw against mental effects that temporarily direct your actions. You create a success instead. So if someone wants to coerce you or intimidate you, and if they fail, they critically fail instead. Arthur isn't someone people are just going to intimidate. We also get Nature's Edge. Enemies are flat-footed to you if they're on naturally difficult terrain, on natural uneven ground, or in difficult terrain resulting from a snare. Um, this is really good if your DM likes to play with different terrain effects. I know I need to start doing that more often, but, you know. We also get Ranger Expertise. Your rank and Ranger DC class increases to Expert. And for our skill increases level, let's get crafting up to master to really get the most out of our little crafter. For our 10th level, let's get our ability boosts. We get dexterity, constitution, wisdom, and intelligence of. And for our ranger feat, I suggest deadly aim to make a range strike against a hunted prey at a negative 2 penalty. This increases to a plus 4 damage bonus to that strike. And the bonus gets increased to plus 6 at the 11th level and plus 8 to the 15th level. Which is a great way to stack on damage on a build that's built to put out damage. Uh, you can pretend the negative 2 is just a recoil to flavor it in text. And for our skill feat at this level, let's get Forager. On a success, you can provide sustenance for yourself and four additional creatures, so your basic adventuring party. And on a critical success, you can take care of twice as many creatures on a success. This is really good for getting berries and stuff while in the wild, so at our level I think Arthur's got all his wildlife skills, so he can focus back on more combat-oriented or social skills from this point forward. At the 11th level, let's get... A general feat, get die hard. You die at the dying condition of 5 instead of the normal dying condition of 4. Which is good because Arthur is really hard to put down. We also get Juggernaut. Our rank and fortitude saves increase the master. And when you roll a success on a fortitude save, you get a critical success instead. I really wish we got this earlier in the game, but you know, you shouldn't be failing fortitude saves anyways. Unless, you know, you roll badly on the first real important one. We also get medium armor expertise. Our ranks in light armor, medium armor, and unarmored gets increased to expert. We get a skill increase from survival to master, and wild stride, you ignore the effects of non-magical difficult terrain. Uh, you get to treat it as normal difficult terrain. At the 12th level we get a ranger feat, get double prey. When you use hunt prey action you can pick two creatures you can hunt, which is good when you're fighting multiple people in a gunfight. And for our skill feat, let's get quick coercion. You can coerce a creature within one round of conversation instead of one minute. Arthur can shake down people with more than a few sentences and maybe just a look. So this is great for some black hat gameplay. 13th level, you get Ancestry Feet. Let's get Stubborn Persistence. When you would become fatigued, attempt a DC 17 flat check. On a roll, you aren't fatigued. Arthur has a strong will, so this is going to compensate for some late game strength. And for our skill increases, get Nature to Expert. Let's get Weapon Mastery. Our ranks and simple martial weapons gets increased to Master. The 14th level of Ranger, get Distracting Shot. If you critically hit your opponent with a ranged attack, or you hit them at least twice in the same turn, they are flat-footed until the start of your next turn, 
which is great for denying people their AC and helping out the team. Like if you have a rogue that can get off sneak attack or maybe a fighter to help lower that AC. And for our skill field this level, get Terrain Stalker. While undetected from all non-allies in the type of area you pick, you can sneak without attending a stealth check as long as you move no more than 5 feet and do not move within 10 feet of enemy at any point during your movement. I would pick Underbrush so you can hide in bushes and stuff like that, like Arthur tends to do in this game. And for the 15th level, we get Ability Boost. Boost Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, and Wisdom. Always boost your Dexterity or Strength because Arthur is really good with his fist. Constitution because you need a little bit more health. And Wisdom because, you know what, at this point in the game you're starting to realize that maybe this negative and harmful attitude that you're putting out into the world isn't going to be reflected back at you very well. For general feat, get Incredible Initiative to add a flat plus two to initiative rolls. Arthur's one of the fastest guns in the East. The game mostly takes place in the East. Either way, you can draw faster than most people. You also get greater weapon specialization. Your damage from weapon specialization increases to four with weapons you're an expert in, six if you're a master in them, which is the highest we'd be able to get. So you're gonna add a plus six to all your damage from here on out. You also get improved evasion. Your rank and reflex saves gets increased to legendary. And when you roll a critical failure on a reflex save, you just get a failure instead. Even on a bad roll, you're still doing better than most people. If you fail a reflex save against a damaging effect, you only take half damage. But even if you do fail, you're much better off than people who are succeeding. Get incredible senses. Your rank and perception increases to legendary. Nothing gets by Arthur without him knowing. And the skill increases get survival to legendary. At the 16th level, get greater distracting shot. If you hit your hunted prey with a ranged weapon, it's flat foot until the start of your next turn. But if you critically hit it, or hit it twice in the same round, it's flat foot until the end of your next turn. So with that, Arthur can just start slamming people with bolts with their to keep their AC low and to make those extra shots even more dangerous. For a skill feat, get specialty crafting and pick alchemy to get a plus one bonus to crafting checks when you craft items of that type. If you're a master in crafting, it increases to plus two. For ancestry feat, at the seventeenth level, Pick Hardy Traveler to increase your maximum and encumbered bulk limits by 1. In addition, you get a plus 10 foot bonus to your speed during overland travel. This is great for those horseback rides from mission to mission. Master Hunter Precision, your weapon mastery allows you to hit your prey's vital areas multiple times. The second time in a round you hit your hunted prey, you deal an additional D8 of damage. At the 19th level, that second hit in the round is, deals 2D8 damage. And on the third hit of your hunted prey, it deals 1d8 damage. So no matter what, you're always adding a d8 of damage to every single attack, at the very least. And let's increase crafting the legendary to craft pretty much anything you want. At the 18th level, get perfect shot. Make a ranged attack with a required weapon against your hunted prey. And if you hit, the strike just deals maximum damage. After the strike, your turn ends, but pretty much if you want to, you can just deal the highest amount of damage you want for a round. This is perfect for a Deadeye headshot. And for our skill feat, let's get Hobnobber. So you can gather information, you take half as long as you normally do. So this is typically reduced to about an hour instead of two. At the 19th level, get Untrade Improvisation. For your proficiency bonus, to untrained skill checks is equal to your level instead of just half your level. This is great because Arthur's kind of good at everything and this will help even out those stats. We also get Second Skin. Our ranks in light armor, medium armor, and unarmored defense increase to master. And when you're wearing light and medium armor, you can rest normally rather than receiving a poor rest. I don't really do rest checks in my games, but if your DM does, this should protect you. And for our last skill increase, let's get nature up to master. We also get swift prey, so you can use hunt prey as a free action if it's your first action of your turn. So focus your eye, draw, shoot. And at level 20, we get our last ability boosts. Boost Dexterity, Strength, Constitution, and Wisdom. And for our last Ranger feat, let's get Legendary Shots. So you can ignore the penalty of attacking up to 5 Rage Increments away from your Hunted Prey. Which means you can ignore up to 600 feet with the Hand Crossbow, or up to 1200 feet with the Heavy Crossbow. So effectively, if it's in your sights and you're hunting it, you're going to hit it. And for our last skill feat, it's got to be good. Let's get craft anything. So as long as you have the appropriate crafting skill feat, like magical crafting for magical weapons, you meet the item's level and proficiency requirement, you ignore just about every other requirement and be able to make it. So Arthur can basically craft anything without any issue, if your D GM allows it, of course. Now, 
with all that being said, should you ride with Arthur? Let's talk about damage. With Hunter's Edge, you get 1d8 plus 3d8 plus 6 from Dex plus 6 from Weapon plus 2 from the Crossbow Ace plus 8 with Deadly Aim on top of that, meaning on a single roll, you have a low of about 26 damage and a max of 54 with a perfect shot, making Arthur a very good character to have even when it's just consistent damage. On top of that, you have the ability to shoot people between 600 and 1200 feet away from you without any issue. And also as Arthur, you're really bulky with 308 health by level 20, meaning you're going to be pretty hard to kill. And besides being able to put out damage as a duelist, you're also a great tracker and a great horseback rider. So you'll be able to find their prey and then hunt them down without any issue. And with Arthur's skills, you should be able to craft anything from health potions to vaccines to small boosts to make sure everyone has something useful to them in their pockets. But Arthur isn't a bad man and he isn't a good one. He's just a thief in a world that doesn't want him anymore. So get that fire in your eyes, wrestle the giant, saddle up with your posse, and stand unshaken. And just keep an eye on those fortitude saves. The last thing you want to do is fail one of those important ones really early in the game.